want more great Griffith Goods and Spirits content, well hit us up on Instagram and TikTok at Griffith Goods and Spirits for fun stuff like live shows, merch giveaways, and your chance to make it on Griffith Goods and Spirits. And then hit us up with a like, subscribe, and click that bell in order to be notified for the next family dinner. Here's Mitchell. We're back. Mitchell Griffith here with Griffith Goods and Spirits. We're doing one of the greatest horror movies of all time. A Stanley Kubrick classic with one of the most recognizable film scores. Cue the music. That's right. We're doing The Shining and Fine Dining. Good man. You set him up and I'll knock him back, Lloyd, one by one. As we always do, let's start with a cocktail. Today, we're gonna do a Red cocktail. Rock. The flavor profile is about as complex as the hedge maze at the Overlook Hotel. We're gonna start off with one and a half ounces of our Sailor Jerry Spiced Rum. It adds a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of spice to this cocktail. We're gonna do half an ounce of Campari that's gonna add a little bit of bitterness to this and a depth of flavor. We're also gonna do one ounce of fresh pineapple juice and one ounce of our brown sugar simple syrup to add a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of flavor to this. And then we're gonna add in one ounce of our cherry grenadine here to give it a little bit more of our red flavor that we're looking for. And then we're gonna lock it together, give it a fun shake. After giving it a good few shakes, what we're gonna do, break it apart and open pour. Now, to garnish this cocktail. Got a little bit of fresh pineapple here that I'm just gonna spear onto a toothpick. And then, we've got our bourbon cherries here. As y'all know, one of my favorite garnishes. We're just gonna grab one of these and pop this right on the end of our pineapple slices. Drop that right in there. And now, you got a cocktail so good, it'll keep you sane. Cause remember, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. You were always the best of them. Best goddamn bartender from Timbuktu to Portland, Maine. Or Portland, Oregon for that matter. Thank you for saying so. I'm gonna start on the fine dining portion of this. We've got our Dutch's potatoes here. What I'm gonna do is just season these toss them on the stove to boil for a few minutes. And once you're able to stick a knife all the way through it without any resistance, kind of scary, then your potatoes will be ready. Bread. Now that we've got our potatoes started on the stove, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off on our steakhouse cream spinach. What I've got here is four tablespoons of butter going into our skillet. And what we're gonna do after that is add in three cloves of minced garlic and one whole yellow onion. We're just gonna cook all this down until it's translucent and then we'll start adding in our spinach and our cheese. This will take about eight to 10 minutes. Oh God. Got onions on the loose. Now that our onions are getting translucent, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a quarter cup of flour to this. We're just gonna mix this in to almost make a roux. We're gonna get this some good color on it. Now, after you've allowed this to cook for about two to three minutes, you're gonna start getting a little nutty aroma to it. And that's when you'll know when you should add your half and half. I've got 16 ounces or two cups of half and half here. We're gonna mix that in and we're just gonna make sure that this is all broken up. We're gonna allow this to get a little bit of color on it. Just gonna turn this up to four and allow this to come to a soft boil before we add in our mozzarella cheese and our cream cheese. And then after that, we'll add in our Parmesan and our spinach. We've got this to a soft boil. And what I've got here is eight ounces of mozzarella. You wanna make sure that this is fresh shredded mozzarella or else it won't combine as well as you want it to. And then we've got four ounces of cream cheese here. We're just gonna drop this in and allow all this to melt together and get to know each other. 
You're just gonna keep stirring this around for about a minute or two until it's thick with three C's. And then what we're gonna do is add in our 24 ounces of spinach and just go ahead and mix this all together. You wanna make sure that this is blended together really, really well. And we're gonna allow this to cook for another minute or two just to make sure that any residual water from this spinach is cooked off. Make sure it's super well incorporated. And then what I'm gonna do, hit it with a little bit of salt. Make sure and stir that all in together. And a little bit of fresh cracked pep. Then I'm gonna top this with our Parmesan over there. Then I'm gonna toss it in the oven at 350 for about 10 to 15 minutes, just to make sure that that Parmesan melts on top. And we get a nice little crust. We've got it all cooked up. So now what we're gonna do, is we're just gonna add in some of this fresh shaved Parmesan to the top of this. And we're gonna toss it in the oven at 350 and just allow the spinach dip to cook up until all of our Parmesan is melted on top. And toss this in the oven. Well, one thing for sure, you don't have to worry about food. Our potatoes have finished boiling and they are easily stabbed with a knife. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna strain out all that water and then we're gonna add these to a large bowl along with, we've got two tablespoons of sour cream. We've got one shallot. No, not a shallot, sorry. Uh, we've got two tablespoons of butter and then we're gonna add in one egg to this and then we're just gonna mash all of this together to make sure that it's well incorporated. And we'll put it in the oven as well and allow it to bake. We've incorporated all those potatoes together. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a dollop of potatoes on our pan here. And then we're gonna take our fork and draw some stiff peaks with these. Toss this in the oven until it gets a nice good brown crust all around our potatoes. And draw some lines in it to resemble a little bit of peaks. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow this to brown up and then serve as a wonderful base for our steak and our cream spinach. Nothing I can't handle though, Lloyd. Thanks. We've got our beautiful filet here. And what we did is we salted it and allowed it to sit for just a few minutes and then dabbed it with our paper towel to take away some of that moisture because we always want a good crust on any steak and moisture is the enemy of that. We just wrapped it in bacon. What we're gonna do, we're gonna take it and we're just gonna roll it on this bacon in our pan and allow that bacon to fry up. Now that we've gotten a good char on all of our bacon, what we're gonna do is remove our filet and we're just gonna again dab it dry. Make sure that that top and bottom are both super dry. You wanna make sure so that you can get a great sear on this steak. And then what I'm gonna do is just drop it right in the pan and allow it to sear up for about a minute and a half both sides. After a minute and a half, we've made sure that we've gotten a good sear on this. As you can tell, we've got some great crust to the steak. And we're gonna flip it over and allow it to sear again for another minute and a half on the bottom side. All right, our steak is cooked for a minute and a half both sides. We've got obviously a wonderful sear on both sides. We're gonna set this aside, just to let it rest and reabsorb some of those juices. We're gonna kill our heat in our pan down to about two. Come and play with us, Daddy. Now after our pan has actually cooled down, I'm gonna add in one diced shallot and just allow this to brown up a little bit. And then after that, I'm gonna add in four tablespoons of butter. And we're just gonna go ahead and start our sauce. We're gonna start a nice little glaze for our steak to go over the potatoes and the spinach. We're just gonna keep mixing this around until your shallot has some good color to it. We're starting to get some good brown butter color to this. And that's when you'll know that it's time to add your beef broth. I'm gonna add in 
four ounces of beef broth to this. And we're gonna add in four ounces of our red wine. We're just gonna mix all of this together. And this is the color that you're looking for. And we're just gonna go ahead and reduce this down while all of our other stuff is finishing in the oven and our steak is cooling. Once your glaze looks like this and you're able to draw a line in it, then you know that your glaze is ready to go and we can start on the plating. Tony, I'm scared. We got all of our ingredients of our shiny and fine dining dinner done and ready to go. And now it's time to start on the plating. To start off our plating, we're just gonna gingerly pull our mashed potatoes right off here. They're just gonna slide right off that parchment paper. Center that up. We're gonna hit it with a little bit of chives. And then we're gonna add a hearty scoop of our cream spinach on top. Just a nice little dollop there. It's gonna have some wonderful flavors of Parmesan and mozzarella in there that's gonna add a nice good base. Then we're gonna make sure to pull our toothpick out of our steak. We're gonna take our steak and set that gingerly on top. And then to cap off our steak, what we're gonna do is we've got a spoon here. We're just gonna label on some of our glaze. This is gonna add in just a wonderful depth of flavor, a little bit of sweetness to our steak. I'm just gonna go over the top with this. And those shallots are gonna add a great bit of flavor. You can add in a little dash of it to the bottom there for some good color. And then what we're gonna do to finish off so I've got a little bit of fried garlic here that I just fried up in our fresh olive oil. I'm just gonna dab that on top. How do you like it? <laughs> We've got our beautiful shining and fine dining steak here for a meal that'll keep you sane throughout the winter and our red rum cocktail. And now you're ready for family dinner. You're just gonna keep stirring this for about a minute or so until it's thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. Now the hardest part of this recipe is to not make it like this and then just eat it before you add it on the Parmesan and put it in the oven. But you know, we gotta taste test it, right? Make sure it's okay. Our 24 ounces of cream cheese, bitch. So we're gonna start off with four ounces of beef broth. No, no, sir. Now for the uh, fun behind the scenes portions that you don't see is uh, me stirring this glaze, 20 minutes. 